Hi everyone, welcome back to part four of our cargo trailer build. So you can see I've got the ceiling done now, it's all paneled. And most of the walls are done, but I need heat in here. And one of the viewers suggested that I should really test out my little diesel heater uh, sooner rather than later. So I got it a little while ago, I want to make sure it works in case the warranty runs out so I can send it back. So that's what I got planned. You can see I've got a lot of stuff here and behind me. So I'm going to insulate underneath, put insulation underneath the trailer. We're doing two inches R10 underneath. And then I'm going to test fit, trial fit my tank and then install my diesel heater. And it'll make it nice and warm in here for when I'm painting. I'm putting in two inch foam. I'll show you that in a bit. Just this uh, same foam board I put in the wall. So that's going in the bottom. And then what I'm using to, to keep it in is I bought a bag of these uh, washers. They're just a plastic washer. They're, they're used to hold a foundation wrap on. Then you just uh, powder nail them in to the foundation. So then I got <laughs> ended up using just deck screws. So two and a half inch deck screws through there and it's perfect. Yeah, the two and a half goes exactly in the middle of my plywood in my floor so I don't end up having all these screws poke through the bottom of my floor and it holds it in solid here I'll, I'll show you what I mean so here's those screws here's my insulation and then I've got the the washers with the screws two and a half inch deck screws I ended up having to cut this this sheet in half just to slide it in there because the bolts for the the leaf springs but uh, hopefully for the others I'm gonna be able to just put one piece in we'll see how it goes but that's it right there I'm just in the process of putting in this uh, little diesel heater right here. So I got my tank in here just so I can get the spacing right where I want that diesel heater. And then what I did is I cut a five inch hole. First off, I just want to explain I'm not any expert on these. So there is one uh, YouTube YouTuber, I guess, that uh, is an expert. He does a lot of testing and he has a lot of information on these diesel heaters. So I'll link that in my description and I recommend you go and watch his, all his tests because there's a lot of people that are, that are not cutting these five, this five inch hole. They're just putting the hole for the pipes and it, it's way too hot. You'll end up catching fire. The last thing, this is right underneath your bed. So the last thing you want is this to catch fire and all this stuff's flammable you know like this insulation very flammable the wood the whole thing so anyways this is what I'm gonna do I'm just following what he kind of mentioned this is a five inch furnace takeoff so five inch furnace takeoff it's got a little gasket here you peel this it sticks to your furnace and you can screw it in anyways this is what I'm gonna use in that hole this is gonna be like a little heat shield down in there and then what I'm gonna do is whatever sticks out the bottom because obviously that's bigger than two inches I'm just gonna cut it notch it for whichever way the pipes are going like the intake and the exhaust so that hopefully at the front it'll have like a little bit of a heat uh, a shield for the mud and stuff so it doesn't get in into where all these fittings are here so I'm gonna mount this plate on the bottom of this uh, heater Loctite it in nice and solid put in the pipe the tubes and then drop it down into this and then screw it into the floor so this will permanently it'll stay in there I'm gonna uh, PL it right in there and then silicone up underneath so no water is coming up into the to my um, plywood here and then that'll stay there a couple other things too that he mentioned is this tubing that comes with it is no good uh, I guess it's too flexible so as the pump pulses, the little diesel pump, 
it uh, absorbs too much of the pulse and then what you get is an inefficient burn. So this is nylon tubing, very very tiny but uh, so that's what I'm going to be using, nylon tubing and I'm just going to be using this for the connections. So wherever this fits onto like say onto the diesel heater is going to be a little bit of that green pipe. But it's going to be, the end of this is going to be touching right in here and, and right into the fuel line here. So it'll go right in on touching onto that. So there's no gaps where it can absorb those pulses. So here's our hole, it's got the ring in there so that'll protect any, uh, anything from melting, it's steel all the way around, steel underneath, and then it's got this little gasket here. I'll pull this off once I do the flooring and I, once I install it permanently. So now this plate here just goes right onto there. So I've had my temporary diesel set up here. I've just got my batteries over on this side for now. I just wanted to run it. One of the viewers suggested running the diesel heater just in case there's something wrong with it. So it was all set up. It's been running for about eight hours. Nice and toasty. Man, does it ever get warm in here. So now I'm gonna take it all apart here and I'll do the, the system properly. I'll put the batteries on this side and but I wanna get the floor down first. I'll just show you what I've got planned now. So here's my temporary tank, and I just was running my hard line in underneath there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run a, a hose, just a garden hose for that fuel line. I'll just run it all the way to the front, and then up in here to, I'm gonna mount the tank on the outside here. So I'm going to take this tank, I'm going to mount it here on the outside. So I'm going to make a couple L brackets that are going to be bolted on the bottom of here just to carry the weight of that tank. And then I'm also going to bolt it to the, the hard box here. I've got one of these pieces of aluminum from my window opening. And I'm going to build a little bit of a guard around that tank. So it's going to be solid just to, to give it a little protection for driving through the bush. The other window opening I'm going to use to cover my propane tanks up here. So I'm just going to take this, give it a little bend on either side, cut it off, and you can still load the tanks through the side here to get them in. So here's the plan for the guard and uh, where we're mounting it. You see I've got these two little angle irons here now mounted on here. So the tank's gonna sit on top of there. I just put a little piece of uh, um, hose on here just to give it a little bit of cushion. I was worried it might rub through the tank. And I'll just PL premium those things on there. So how I'm gonna attach this whole unit is, uh, what I'm gonna do is use threaded rod. And I'm just gonna stagger the bolts to give me the spacing I need. So like this bolt here will go through all the way through here and then once I get this metal plate cut oh, and it'll cover over top of here and I'll use uh, bolts uh, nuts on here and then just pinch this plate in there to hold it uh, away from this so it's not all rubbing together so I'm gonna put it through 
on the tank or on the box here it's gonna have the bolt in there stop the the box and the tank from rubbing together and then I'm gonna pinch the tank with those threaded that threaded rod and then I once I get this thing cut and bent to fit around here I'm gonna pinch that on there also so that it'll all be one piece and not uh, not rub on anything I'll show you how that works okay here's my little metal guard all marked out so I just laid this on there marked out the holes here I used that to center it then measured four inches on either side four inches marked that came down just far enough to to clear that angle bracket those angle brackets there and uh, yeah now I've just got the tab so I'm going to bend this and then these tabs are going to go underneath here and I'll just rivet them on I'll rivet those tabs on there and then that's it we'll stick that on there Here's the completed setup with a threaded rod. So you can see down inside, I've got my bolts down in there, and the nuts are just locked it in both sides. And then the threaded rod all the way through. So then on here, just clears a little bit, and I'm going to put my panel on there. And then mount that whole unit to to my box, my drain line in here. So to get the, I drilled it uh, five sixteenths, and I couldn't. I was thinking I was just going to feed this tubing with the little fitting attached on it through there, but I couldn't do that. So I used that wire here, and I pushed the wire up through, all the way through and out the top. It's just number 10 gauge and then I could stick the hose on it and now I'm just going to pull it through and then get this fitting in there and get it all done up. Here's our finished product. So I gotta still paint the frame a little bit and everything. So this is, you can unbolt this, but that's that window cut out there. And then here's the, the cover over the diesel tank. In here is the pump. filter pump and then that's the nylon tubing that's coming out of there I just put uh, that um, cover over top of it I used a hose just an old hose that I'm running the nylon tubing in inside here so that goes down along the inside of the frame rail and I'll show you down below so here's that hose going down the frame rail. And this is the setup. So I've got the hose going inside a little bit. I thought really to make sure to protect that nylon uh, tubing. And then I've got a little bit of slope on this thing coming out. I don't have the muffler on it. I didn't actually found, find it that loud. Find the, found the fan inside was much louder than the exhaust outside. Anyways, um, and then I built this little shield here for the air intake and uh, then I just attached it up there. So I think that'll work pretty good. Everything's nice and protected. I'll move on to the next project.